Welcome back. We continue now with our cartoon surgery, having already cut from the skin down through the serous cavity. All right, so at this point, we are prepared to start cutting into the digestive tract and look at the space inside. Um, before we do that, um, we might want to administer a little anesthesia again to make sure our patient doesn't wake up. So we'll do that and uh, put him back to sleep. And what we're going to do take away our spider here for a moment and erase a portion of the digestive tract so we can look inside. Okay, we're taking off another square chunk of, of um, in this case, the wall of the digestive tract. Keep that nearby to put back later. And what do we see? Well, we're looking inside the space within the digestive tract, for example, the stomach. Um, this is called the lumen. Lumen is just the name for the space inside any hollow organ. And what's very distinctive about this space is that it's, of course, continuous with the outside world. Food goes in the mouth, goes through the stomach, and, and so forth, and out the anus. So there's a continuous connection um, between that space and the outside world. And to highlight that difference, I want to color in this space is green. In contrast to the closed body cavity, the serous cavity, which will color in as blue. These are completely independent spaces. There's no way for you to go from one space to the other. Other examples of open cavities in the body besides the lumen of the digestive tract would be uh, in the urinary tract, the respiratory tract, and the reproductive tract. So there are a lot of these open cavities in the body, and the membrane that lines these cavities is always called a mucous membrane. or mucosa. So that's going to be the membrane that faces the lumen. Put that down here. Um, the mucosa is quite often uh, a membrane that secretes mucus, which is where the name comes from. They don't always secrete mucus, but many of them do. Um, because they're involved in secretion or absorption in many cases, you're typically going to see large epithelial cells. Um, since we're talking about the stomach a lot here, I'm going to draw in the types of tall cells that you would see in the stomach. That would be your epithelium. The connective tissue layer of a mucosa is always called lamina propria. And that's true of not only the digestive tract, but urinary, reproductive, and so forth. Okay, now at this point, we can add some more detail. Um, the stomach wall, many of these hollow organs have, have a muscular wall. So we'll indicate that. That's analogous to the muscle of the body wall. And then we have the visceral serosa, which we uh, have avoided so far, so we want to indicate that. And it's going to be really identical to the parietal serosa, which you would guess because they're continuous with one another, only it's flipped around, facing the serous cavity from the other side. So the epithelium faces outward, and again, that's called mesothelium.
and connective tissue next to that. At this point, we've completed our diagram of all of the body layers. We have the skin or cutaneous membrane on the outside, the body wall inside of that, the parietal serosa inside of that, followed by the serous cavity, and then you have the visceral serosa, a layer of muscle in the hollow organs. Um, the inner lining of those organs is called the mucosa, and the space inside is called the lumen. You can see some of the similarities here. Again, they all have a, an epithelial layer and a connective tissue layer. Um, the epithelium always faces the space. And we've talked about how the visceral serosa and the parietal serosa are really the same membrane, only flipped around. And there are going to be some differences as well. The skin, of course, concerned with protection, a dry membrane uh, for the most part. The serous membranes concerned with lubrication and um, sliding. And the mucous membranes concerned largely with secretion and absorption. All right, at this point, we can put our patient back together. Um, stitch that body wall right back on. And wake him up. And he's good to go. Thank you for watching.